is becoming a pharmacist still a good career in 2025? And before I even go into the video and present you guys with some articles that I'm reading and some of the stuff that I'm seeing is I want to know from you in the comments if you think yes or no. Because there's articles coming out like this now that Walgreens is starting to say, hey, we're going to release workloads to pharmacists. And what does that do? That means that they're going to start using way, way, way more automation um, in pharmacies and starting to dispense medication. So they're going to get robots just like this to dispense medications, um, hold inventory and kind of count the pills and do basically what a pharmacist does without the counseling. So when I look at the job description, I got one up, pulled one up here from a summary from one in Las Vegas. And it basically, the bullet points just kind of show what a pharmacist does. So dispense medication that a robot um, will do, that pharmacy robot that, they, that you saw earlier. Um, verifies prescriptions for dose, doses, so AI and artificial intelligence and this robot will assist with that. Verifies patients counseling. So what I'm thinking is going to happen is, is that they're going to roll out this pharmacy robot and they will do like tele, telepharmacy where they just dispense them. And then, oh, if you have a question, um, you just call in and you click on an iPad and you just speak to somebody. And at first it's going to be just... Um, the pharmacist and then at one point they're gonna probably lobby to get hey we got all these AI tools now and they can give you an even better and an even more accurate um, stuff uh, case scenario based on just you than um, a pharmacist can because every time a pharmacist talks to you it's gonna be expensive so how do you cut costs you invent an AI tool and you just say hey just talk to this little robot Talk to this little AI machine and it will cut down on time. Administrator, administrate vaccines. That's probably not going to happen in the near future. Um, perform health screenings, blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose checks. So I know that they used to have at pharmacies, they used to have this machine where you sit in and you just put your arm in. They had them at Walmarts, had them everywhere where they kind of checked um, blood pressure and all this other stuff. So, and the funny thing is, is like, I've never once been at a pharmacy and I've actually talked to the pharmacist about um, medications. So let me know if, you're, if you've ever done that um, and talked to like a pharmacist and be like, hey, what about this? What about this? Most of the time it's your doctor that kind of did it in my case. So could be wrong, could be an outlier. So here we go. Supervise pharmacy technicians ensure workflow compliance. So if you have a robot to spend all that, I don't know how much you're going to really need to um, optimize the workflow. Manage inventory of medication pharmacy supplies, so you're not going to have to do that because the robot will tell you, hey, we're low on whatever it is. Maintain records, control substances, and uh, pharmacy compliance with staff, federal law. So that tool, that robot will basically do that for you. Um, maintain records, collaborate with insurance companies. So that's, that's going to be somebody else that's way less expensive than a pharmacist, I assume, that's going to do all that kind of stuff. Offer over-the-counter recommendation for minor alignments. So when you go to CVS, I've never had the pharmacist actually recommend over-the-counter stuff. Um, maybe just what, uh, what kind of state I'm in in Nevada, so I don't know. And participate in wellness programs. So I'm looking at all these stuff and I'm looking at all these things that are, that are slowly coming out where they're doing telemed and they're doing these robots that are going to start coming out and saying, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to help you. And they have the article right here that says we're going to help you be more efficient. No, no, it is one step away of you being gone or you working from an office somewhere and overseeing eight, nine of these robots dispensing medication. And if they want something from you, they'll pick up the phone and you just call in and say, you know what, this is my question. What am I going to do with that? And then they're going to say, hey, this is what's going to happen. Interesting part, though, is, is that, that I didn't know before doing all this research is that there's a difference between normal medication and then there's type 2 classification drug. I have a list right here, and some of them, depending on what state you're in, they're going to say, hey, you got to talk to somebody 
and kind of figure out, hey, what, uh, what are my options for if they're more addictive and there's like opioids and all this other stuff. So then they're like, hey, you got to talk to somebody when you take those. And the funny part is, is that a lot of people now are like, hey, I don't want to wait in 45 minute Walgreens line to pick it up. So what do you do? There's a company like Amazon that says, we'll deliver it to you. We'll, we'll just make sure that we have a licensed pharmacist on hand, on demand, where you can just call in and ask any questions and they'll deliver it. They'll drive to your house, bring it, and all you got to do is then just take it. And if you have any questions, for you to read the barcode or you ask AI yourself. So are we in an area now where all these places where you need to know stuff, like where you need to physically know things, are those going to be outdated? Because just knowing it and passing a bar or a license or an exam isn't going to be necessary if you can just ask AI. And I know we're only in the infant stage where AI is just starting to become popular. I think like the last four years, there was a huge boom. And now we're seeing that, hey, maybe there's more to it. Maybe I don't need to pay a lawyer five, six hundred dollars to write me up a contract. Maybe I can just use AI and it can just help me write it up. Or maybe I don't need to hire a hundred and twenty thousand dollar pharmacist. I'll just do it. Uh, I will just have one pharmacist on staff, have all these robots and just dispense medication because we're so not profitable that we got to figure out how to do how to be more profitable. And how do you become more profitable? You cut salaries. And that's kind of what I see coming. And it's like industries. When I talk about this stuff, people always misinterpret me and say, oh, this isn't, this isn't right. No, if one company does it, it starts like an industry revolution. I talked about UPS layoffs. Tom just wrote me to see him and says, hey, DHL also doing layoffs. So when Walgreens comes in and says, you know what? We're going to start doing these robots. That means that CVS 100% going to follow. That means that all these other pharmacies are looking at it, be like, hmm, let's see how this goes. And all of a sudden, you have this chain reaction where there's a bunch of people with the same, with the same kind of infrastructure going to the same kind of scenario. So what are they doing? They're basically doing the red box model where they're like, hey, just come and pick your DVD. And they're just gonna say, hey, come and just, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll dispense your medication. And the next thing is, is like, hey, just do it online and we'll come over and just kind of deliver it. And there's pros and cons to everything, right? And if you're a pharmacist right now, it's gonna be really, really tough to see where the trend goes in five, 10 years from now, because you can literally do the red box model where you just scan your ID, do something and it will tell you, hey, your prescription is ready for pickup. And you just kind of press a few buttons and it dispenses it. And then it says, hey, do you want to talk to a talk to an, uh, a pharmacist? Nope. And then you can just click no. And they have like multiple booths next to each other and you're good. So all these type of things are coming. All of these, these AI revolutionary things that we've been talking about are slowly coming to, to the market. Automation and all these AI integration, being more efficient so big companies can make more profits, pay shareholder bigger, pay shareholder bigger amounts. And that's what companies are there for, to make a profit. And it is just crazy to see that five, six, seven years ago, to become a pharmacist was like a great career. Now, I would say, uh, I don't know, because if every pharmacy is going to have these, these, um, these robots, how many pharmacists do you actually need? Because you can have a place in town that you still need to have in person because of laws and everything else. But don't, don't think that there's going to be one company that's going to lobby so hard to say, you know what, we're just going to get rid of that law because people, you know, companies lobbied and said, hey, you know, or Walgreens, CVS spent a few hundred million dollars saying, hey, this is not right. We can do everything over telehealth. And then all of a sudden, we're good to go. And when I'm looking at a bunch of stuff like that, and I'm looking at trends, 
this is where it's going. Kind of automated and everything is kind of done for you so you can get a quick turnaround time and keep on moving. And the big problem is when you walk into these CBSs, they have everything from liquor to condoms to whatever you need, they have there. And now the question becomes, is that still gonna be feasible? Is that still gonna be valuable in the coming years? Or do you just get rid of that model and stop selling milk and eggs and cheese and condoms and just go for, hey, we're the lowest price in pharmacy? Or are you just gonna say, hey, all of these things are valuable to customers, but now they all want at home, like Amazon, they all kind of want the at home delivery. So are you gonna do, close these stores and just have a huge warehouse where you dispense them and then just drive them around and hire like Amazon drivers where you just kind of deliver it. All these things are valid questions. Do you have all the answers? Not really, but I'm telling you, the world, the landscape is changing. And to that, there's another article right here that's saying that more people than ever are worried about losing their jobs. And it isn't necessarily about tariffs, it's just when automation has become a thing where now we're talking about AI, AI first companies. Is it gonna work? Probably not. But hey, if you invest a shit ton of resources into anything, eventually it will work, right? So if you're gonna drop in hundreds of billions of dollars into AI, automation, GPTs, all these chatbots, at one point you're gonna come and see, hey, this is actually working. And it's a trend, it's what everybody's looking for. And if you don't want to do that, then you got to vote with your wallet. You got to say, you know what? That is not where I want to go. This is not the route. And you stand in line and you say, I demand to speak with a real person. And if you're not going to go down that route, because most Americans aren't going to do that. Most Americans are just going to say, you know what? The easy way out, do that. And then all of a sudden the jobs are gone. And then we're like, oops, what happened? It's like, yeah, you guys voted with your wallet. And they did tests on Amazon. Would you buy an American made product for like 30% more than a Chinese made product that's like 20, 30% less? Nobody picked the American made product. So whenever it comes to your wallet, then you're like, ah, I don't, I don't want to spend um, money on, on, uh, on that. I don't want to spend money on American good, but everybody else should. And then everybody else like, yeah, we should do that. But then when it comes to acting, actually implementing it nobody did so yeah this is just a world we're living in the idea is a great implementation not so much but hey if you have hundreds of million dollars you have shareholders you have deep pockets you can trial run anything and this is just another another corporate thing how we can cut cost save money and deliver faster and should be in the consumer's um, best interest but it comes at a cost of jobs. And this is where you need to balance the scale and say, where and how are we gonna do it? And is universal income gonna be a thing? Because if you eliminate all these jobs, if you're gonna keep eliminating, what are all these people gonna do? They already have the hardest time ever getting a job. And now the question is, is when is the scale tip too much to the right or too much to the left and it says you know what we need to stop we need to rethink what we've been doing and yeah kind of let me know what you guys think about all that i just think it's fascinating to see what's going on do i like it i like the automation part i like that you're in and out earlier do i like the job cuts not really but we'll see where this goes and i'm curious to hear what you guys think about all this and yeah, you guys have some really good comments. Please, if you haven't, like and subscribe. It's been super windy out in Vegas today. I think we're gonna get like super high winds. Um, yeah, did a little different neighborhood. You guys let me know. Um, I'm almost at the airport. So I'm in paradise. So it's actually called paradise. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And yeah, like and subscribe.